All right, Stephanie, over to you. Okay. Um, first off, thank you everyone for coming uh, and thank you for attending all of our various office hours that we've done throughout the year. Um, I want to also state that I hope everyone had a wonderful year this year and we are excited to also, once this is over, see you guys in the new year as well. And I want to wish everyone a wonderful holiday season um, as we come into it. So today we're going to be talking about TDR um, and some of the benefits related to that across the boards. And I know that we have a couple questions already coming in. Definitely keep coming in. I'll try and hit on some of these topics as we go as well. Um, so really quick, TDR is not new. Um, it was the beginning of category management. It started in 2016. Um, but the whole purpose is just like within industry to understand the spending habits of the federal government and understand where we have the opportunity to potentially be more advantageous with our purchasing and understand where the, and bring our pricing somewhat closer to the market as well. So we'll kind of go through some different things related to this, however, one of the differences between how we do things now versus how TDR will happen is TDR, our hope is to bring the pricing close to the entire commercial market by doing that horizontal pricing analysis. And that's that um, looking at ceiling rates and transactional data for multiple best in class contracts, not just ours, but a fuller view across the realm of So Stephanie, um, I'm back. Sorry, there's a snowstorm sorry. going on in Utah right now, so my internet is a little patchy <laughs> across the board. Um, but our goal for this whole thing is to bring our pricing more towards the commercial market rather than an individual company's commercial market across the boards. And let me reshare my screen, and hopefully, internet will stay forward across the boards. So the value prop, as I stated, is there's multiple different things that are going on. For the government, it's to get a better understanding of what we're buying, when we're buying, how we're buying. So when there is opportunities for us to work together or even opportunities within a single agency to work within their other groups of their agencies rather than piecemealing things out, find out when piecemealing is appropriate versus doing more consolidated buys is appropriate and ensuring that competition is done, but also everyone has that opportunity across the boards. So you have a bunch of different things happening on the government side related to the value prop. For industry, the value prop is to reduce that burden and to allow us to work closer to the commercial market. Um, we know that the commercial market is very fluctuating a lot. Um, we're hoping in the future as technology does catch up across the boards that TDR and the whole world around TDR will help us do modifications more quickly, get that information more quickly as we get more saturated data. Now, again, we're in the midst of maturing this world. So we're not to that point yet, but we are trying to get to a place where we can follow that market more closely. And that doesn't always mean that it will be that low, low price and making sure that the government's getting the lowest price. It's making sure that the price we're getting is fair and reasonable, is best value, and um, allows everyone to be successful, the government and our stake, our customer agencies, GSA, our contracting officers, and industry across the boards. So, as I stated in here, related to that, the analysis that the federal government's using so that we can better understand ourselves, one of the things that we've realized as federal government has been growing and becoming more technically savvy, 
um, we have a lot of documentation just spread out across um, all these agencies. And we have certain things that help, which is like FPDS, where we can declare where spending is happening. But for those of you guys who use FPDS like we do, it's not very um, detailed. It is very large orders and it's not something that we can really track a lot of trends with. And so figuring out where um, things are being purchased, how they're being purchased and what type of contract vehicles helps us understand how best to set up our contract vehicles for our customer agencies. Um, we really wanna make sure again, that we are coming to this commercial market and doing things similarly to the commercial market not adding in additional requirements and different ways of doing things that just add um, extra burden to our contractors um, that aren't really getting us what we want in the end as well. So we do have um, on top of TDR, we have eBuy, our RFQ tool that helps us facilitate task order competition but also that TDR data of understanding how many firm fixed price contracts we're doing versus time and materials also will be very helpful in the future across the boards because it does help us understand how the government is purchasing things more um, effectively, but it also allows us to analyze that and put that information out so you guys know what the government is doing as well. So, for industry, again, that removal of government contracting specific information that is different than the commercial market is one of the main things that um, we really want to get to just because we have so many new companies coming into the federal space, trying to explain the commercial sales practice and how to track this commercial sales practice understanding that basis of award customer discount ratio and how it's affected by your price reductions clause across the boards is a very difficult thing to explain to new companies that are coming into this federal space. And because it is so unique to the mass program and is not really used by any other IDIQ out there, um, TDR provides us the opportunity to find a better way to do pricing that is more commercial in nature. Um, so, also, just so everyone understands, just in case you're not really familiar, and a lot of you guys may be on the commercial sales practice and not understand the burden that that's included, just in case everyone is, anyone has this question, um, when you do a negotiation via commercial sales practice, and we actually put in here these different, where you can go back and forth, and this is also on the mass roadmap of the differences, and you as a company need to decide which way does work best for you. And um, TDR is optional and it will remain optional going forward, but this is very much a discussion you need to have, not just you and your CEO, it needs to be your financial department and it also needs to be any sales or BD people, anyone who's quoting pricing across the boards. When you do a commercial sales pr um, practice, your company provides GSA with the various discounts that are within your company. What GSA CEOs do is they look at this and they determine via the patterns and percentages of those discounts, which is the most advantageous discount for the federal government. And they create a pricing discount relationship on that most advantageous relationship. That may not be the lowest, but it's going to be the one that is more often to occur because if you have one that's lower, that's a one off, that pricing may not be realistic going forward, which may cause an issue for everyone involved. So they're gonna find the one that's the most advantageous for them. They're gonna create this discount ratio. Now, your job as a company is to maintain this discount ratio. And what that means is you have to have multiple tracking systems involved to ensure that no one in your company provides pricing that disrupts this relationship. And that's very time consuming across the boards. And it is a very government-esque way of doing things. And most companies do not have commonly and commercially the ability to set this up easily because it is not a common commercial situation. 
So you've got to track this. And if by chance someone somewhere within your company does give a discount ratio that is more favorable, um, or you get a new customer that has a more favorable discount, you have to immediately contact GSA and alert them of that situation. If you have a new customer, that could include a new negotiation on your commercial sales practice and basis of award customer discount relationship. Um, if it is something that disrupts that discount relationship, it's going to be doing a modification to update your pricing with the new discount relationship that has been established by a further discount across the boards. And that's where that price reductions clause comes in. It ties into that commercial sales practice by holding your company accountable. So you're really tracking multiple things. You're tracking various discounts for various customers throughout your company. And that is commercial, state, local, charities, nonprofits, federal government, prime contractors, et cetera. And GSA does view prime contracts not as an end user situation, meaning the exception in the price reduction clause that it does not apply to discounts, further discounts given to federal governments or state and local governments. If it is through a prime contractor, that is not a discount related for that end customer. That discount was then given to the prime and could enact your price reductions clause. So you have to really understand it and you have to understand your financials and how your salespeople and BD, whoever that may be and how they do discounts, it's gonna, you're gonna need to be able to review all of that and have an understanding across the boards of that. So that's something that can become very time consuming. When we did the TDR Federal Register at the beginning, we put out a burden analysis that was more or less a guesstimate of what we thought the burden was going to be. And then we reestablished that by putting out a new one, getting comments. And the response from industry in the second one was that our burden analysis was not only incorrect, but was um, it was not as big as it should have been, that the burden was so much more with CSP and um, the price reductions clause across the boards than we had ever really anticipated. And that's just through that continuous monitoring of something that is not commonly found in a commercial world. So when we go to TDR, some of the things you're gonna see is more this horizontal pricing. And some of the other benefits this has for you as a company, especially as a small business, is it makes sure your pricing is in a competitive range. And what that means is we found that we had a lot of companies that do to the commercial sales practice and their internal discount ratios, their pricing was artificially high, mainly because they didn't have a lot of customers or in that realm that their pricing was higher because they were very small, whatever that means, whatever that was, like their pricing just was artificially a little bit higher. And it may have been for very good reason. But with that artificially higher pricing, they were less likely to make any sales within the federal government. And that put them um, at risk with that sales clause that states that you need to have so many sales per year, um, which is $25,000 worth of reportable sales, which right now because of COVID is on hold um, for the in between the five years. However, it could still be a reason why we don't um, exercise an option. And the reason why we have this low sales clause in there as well is to make sure that this contract works for you as industry as much as it works for us as government. Having you guys go through all the rigor of having a government contract, tracking the government contract, all, following all these regulations, maintaining it, compliance, everything involved, it's a costly situation. So we don't want you guys on contract having this burden of this high cost to your company if you're not getting something from it. So this low sales is to help you as much as it is to help the federal government. So moving away from the CSP made it so that we could do a pricing negotiation and help you guys find a range where you would be more competitive, therefore more likely to get a sale. So we have seen in the TDR pilot 
we do have less contractors in that low cell risk than we do in the non-TDR world. Now, we're not sure if that is just because the pilot is so much smaller than the full program. Um, but even so, we were, it was interesting to see that that bringing everyone to that uh, competitive range did help with that sales situation. Um, again, this is, and it goes on, is also on the mass roadmap. But again, I would recommend highly if you are deciding if TDR is for you and if it is applicable to you, right now it is with pilot um, sins. But if you are feeling that this is something that you want to go into prior to doing that, you should definitely be talking with your financial group and you should be talking with your salespeople to see if this is a model that works best for you. Um, for some companies, the CSP may be a better model. It's all going to be dependent on that company. Uh, but as we keep it optional going forward, um, we do want to provide that ability. We have seen in the last year or so, as people get more accustomed to data and data requests, um, because it has become such a commercial world to have these data requests, we've seen a higher participation of the original pilot size um, because everyone's technology is catching up with this. Back when we started in 2016, 2017, I don't know if the technology was as available to everyone. And as we've seen technology grow within companies, especially in accounting, um, the ability to get your system to pull these reports and be able to upload them into SRP, um, I believe has started becoming a little less burdensome for a lot of companies, which I believe has also helped them decide whether or not they want to make this move into TDR. Stephanie? But from our perspective, um, those are the main benefits. I know that we had a couple Q&A going on in here, and uh, I'm actually going to hold them to the end because I'm going to turn it over to Roger Waldron. And I'm going to have him speak on behalf of industry, um, his perspective related to TDR, because I do think the industry perspective is an incredibly important one for this program, as is all of our projects, because it affects you guys so greatly. So, Stephanie, can you hear me? Oh, Roger, I don't think we can hear you. Yes, we can, Roger. I don't think Stephanie can hear. Okay, so folks can hear me? Um, well, first of all, thank you for inviting me to participate in your MAS office hours. I think the office hours are a great concept uh, to share information, you know, across the community community about the MAS program and, you know, the key features and aspects of it. And, um, you know, and this is timely when we're talking about transactional data reporting. And I'll just give you sort of some of the industry perspective, in particular, our members perspective on it. And I'll but I'll start first by just saying, you know, this is, I believe, a good government effort. Um, it actually, you know, basically is consistent with the evolution of the multiple award schedule program to one that focuses and is structured to drive competition value and pricing at the task order level, task and delivery order level. Um, and consistent with that, transactional data is about reporting that information. It is the most relevant market data. Uh, for GSA, for customer agencies, and for contractors as well, directly related to the federal marketplace. Um, and collecting that information can help inform uh, business decisions for the government generally. It can help inform and address, uh, you know, whether it comes to sustainability or cybersecurity, you know, the potential impact of, of this information in supporting government operations, um, you know, is, is significant. And, you know, there are probably ways that will help the government we don't haven't even thought about yet. So uh, I think, you know, that's, that's first and foremost, when you're thinking about it, it's this, I think this is a good program, ultimately for the government. Um, but it's, but it's also good for the government, because it's, it's good for, uh, for creating opportunity for industry. 
Um, you know, TDR is basically a barrier buster in a lot of ways. And what I mean by that is the current um, or the historical commercial sales practices and price reduction clause, which I think um, Stephanie was touching on, serve as a barrier to entry for commercial firms and particularly for small business firms. They are highly complex um, data uh, reporting requirements. They require tracking and monitoring of your commercial operations to ensure you do not violate the price reduction clause and, uh, and in turn have to um, and, and then have to address pricing on your contract or even Civil False Claims Act liability. Um, it's very expensive for contractors, large businesses to comply with um, the PRC and commercial sales practices. And they have the margins and the, and the ability and more resources to do so. But in particular for small businesses with uh, narrower margins and less resources, the overhead costs uh, and burdensome cost of the CSP and PRC basically limit their ability to compete in the market and limit their access to the schedules program. And, um, so reducing that barrier by reporting information that's actually much more relevant to the, you know, to the government customer, that transactional data um, is a great step to support access to the commercial market, access to innovation and new products. It's also especially uh, beneficial for small businesses. Often those small businesses bring innovations and new products to the federal customer and to supporting federal missions. And TDR reduces and eliminates and streamlines the, the process to get on the schedules contract moving forward. Um, and then is, and is less burdensome from a, from a contract administration perspective than the current, you know, historical structure from, you know, that's outdated the, you know, CSB and PRC. So I think it's, that's a huge benefit for enhancing and increasing competition under the program um, and access to the commercial market and access to innovation. Um, so it's, you know, from that perspective, I think it can have a multiplying force and actually enhancing value for customer agencies, increasing access um, to commercial firms and especially small businesses under the program. Um, you know, that's, you know, that's kind of our take on it. Um, we see it significantly reducing burdens, which is important, especially in inflationary times. Um, and, uh, you know, increasing opportunities for companies to participate in the federal market. Steve? Yep. Thank you, Roger. I was looking for the unmute button. So thank you. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, great perspective. I uh, appreciate you being here to share your thoughts from the industry perspective. So yeah. Well, I could say just to, to finish on it is that, you know, and, and I, I have someone who, you know, I worked at GSA as well. You know, GSA has structured a program for for over, over the last couple of decades that drives specifically drives competition at the task order level and value at the task and opportunity for the MS contractors that whether it's eBuy as was mentioned, GSA Advantage, you know, the competitive ordering procedures, the use, the ability to use BPAs, um, the transparency, you know, of those regulations and the enhancement, enhancement of competition of all driving to transactions at the order level. And TDR is just the next logical step in the program and policy approach to the MS program in the federal market. It makes it's logical, it follows on, and it, I believe, will be of great value to the government customer. And I think it, it will enhance opportunities and access for uh, businesses and especially small businesses. Roger, thanks again. I appreciate that. And um, if, if you all can, if you all, I should have put Roger's email address on the screen. I don't know if he would welcome that or not, though. Uh, but you can certainly reach out to Roger. You can find him on the interweb. And uh, well, I can, <laughs> Steve, I can give it. It's rwaldron at thecgp dot org. Thank you, rwaldron at thecgp dot org. 
So thank you. Feel free to reach out to Roger. Someone here sends their uh, their their regards to Roger. So it's great to see you. All right, let me stop the recording at this point, um, so we can we'll do that, and then we're going to continue to answer some questions.